Hello everyone, it's Joel Davis with United Medical Transportation Providers Group, youarethebroker.com, and Home Care Access. And in starting today's conversation, I want to underscore the sole reason, the sole premise for why you are starting your own business, why you operate, why you work to grow and scale your own business. It's easy to say, I want to make more money. And that's true, because money gives you options. But that's why you're in business, is to make more money, have more freedom, more flexibility, have more choices, have more options. It is to empower yourself, bottom line. Empower yourself, have freedom, flexibility, make, have better opportunities for both you, your family, and everything. So that's where the conversation begins. You are in business to empower yourself. The reason I say that is because I absolutely cannot, under any circumstances, stand when I see um, business owners do foolish or unwise things when external forces are applied. Uh, case in point, I see it constantly uh, with like a Medicaid broker. Medicaid brokers are notorious, notorious for setting up circumstances. You sign now. We gotta have this back by tomorrow. Gotta have it by Friday. Oh, I don't know, uh, Johnny might not like it, so, uh, oh, I don't know, but if you do this now, then I think Johnny will like it. They build up all these circumstances why you just, you, you don't have time to think things through, you don't have time to act strategically. You are in business to empower yourself Bar none, bottom line, that's where the conversation starts, ends, it's the foundation of everything. You are not in business to be manipulated by somebody else. Bottom line, you're in business to empower yourself, not be manipulated by someone else. So when someone, whether it be a broker, some type of a sales agent, sales rep, whatever the case may be, um, and it, maybe you're trying to respond to an RFP or an RFQ from a government agency and they're giving you like 72 hours. I've always, I always say it and I'm going to continue to say it. There will always, 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 always be another deal. You may have to wait a little bit longer, dig a little deeper, go a little further, but there will always be another deal. Um, there may be some disappointment in between now and then, but so be it. Who cares? You, have, you are in the position to be empowered. To, you want to empower yourself. You are not in business to be manipulated or to be someone else's pawn. When someone manipulates you and they try to build you up into this frenzy, most of the times, pains to marble, it's, for, it's by design. It's for a reason. It's to get you to act faster and sooner. Don't even think about it. Just do it. Sign here. Sign there. Accept this. Accept these... Uh, uh, second rate terms, whatever it is, don't think it through. A lot of times, a lot of times when they do that, it's so you don't have time to get advice from somebody else, i.e. your attorney, um, sometimes a medical profession, I don't know, um, some type of an advisor. So a lot of times when people will enlist my help or contact me, it's always in a rush, it's in a rush. Uh, uh, Joel, uh, Mr. Davis, uh, this, uh, I gotta have a better, well, I, I'm, it's not gonna happen. It's not gonna happen. Someone's lack of proper planning does not constitute our emergency, okay? Uh, if someone is trying to rush you into acting right now and not even giving you proper time to think it through, to properly strategize, to properly consult with uh, your advisor, your financial advisor, your medical professional, your, your, your legal advisor. You need to stop. Just stop because it's unwise and it's not in your best interest. I say that because there's a couple things I'm seeing with people who we're working with now who it's like some of the things that they, you know, I, I regularly mention that, uh, you know, half the people we work with are people who they go it alone, 
they embrace the White Walkers, they, they've conquered the world by themselves, or so they think, and they go it alone, and then when they hit the wall, then when something bad happens, then they hit a situation they're not sure, then they're willing to backpedal and maybe I need to ask for help. Maybe I need to seek the counsel of the fat man. Now, my staff, they'll tell you it's a lot more than 50%. I mean, it probably is, but whatever. I just, I see it too often. Um, and to kind of parlay that little diatribe I just uh, gave you there, let me give you a quick uh, response. This is from, from, from one of my, one of my uh, guys who I love. Dude's cool. Cool cat, works hard, has BLS and NEMT, BLS basic life support, so he's run some ambulances. Um, he, um, he was solicited to provide a contract for his basic life support division um, and in an effort to expedite, he sent them the, uh, this guy knows I love him sent them a, a just incredibly bad agreement that was like a, a cut and paste type deal from he got from somebody else and what he sent to them was whoever sent them to him whatever he sent them it was like a, a, a cut and a paste by like multiple ver it was just bad it was just bad so he sends it to this facility their legal department goes through the legal department sends it back and my client provider here, he knew he knows nothing about this at the time. This happened in early December. So you know they 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 email him, boom, he sends it right away in an effort to expedite, get the contract, get the work. And then several weeks go by, and legal department sends it back and says basically WTF. So he sent me an email. I didn't put that in this queue here to read it. I didn't think to actually. Um, so he sends me an email, Joel, can you help me with this? So long story short, I go through, completely overhaul this contract. Now listen, uh, I'm not an attorney. I don't play one on TV, but I'm very good at what I do. It is what it is. God has blessed me. If there's one thing, one thing, the one thing that did benefit me, when I was at West Point, I majored in pre-law um, and I minored in systems engineering. And there's one thing that I could, uh, several things, several, several things for sure. But one thing I definitely benefited from was pre-law. Uh, Cause, and since then I've obviously worked on millions of contracts. Um, so anyways, don't ever be pressured into acting fast. Always be smart, be prudent, be strategic, be strategic. Especially if you're gonna go for a legitimate contract and you're gonna make real money, be strategic, seek guidance and counsel. Now, this guy's kept me on retainer, but again, they got him. Like, you got to do it right now, that type of deal. So he does. He responds right away with just train wreck, train wreck of a situation. So then I come in, play cleanup duty, and do very well. And he sends me this awesome email. He says, good morning, Joel. You definitely nailed it. You always nail it. Dang, this contract looks top class. I appreciate it so much. You saved me again. Laugh out loud. I will read this line by line to exactly as you mentioned. Because I gave him some instructions of what to do, how to send it to him, all this kind of stuff. He said, thank you, thank you. Um, again, my initial diatribe wasn't necessarily geared towards this client provider, but it kind of transitions to a very, very nicely. Um, don't ever put yourself in a position where you're allowed to be manipulated. That if you're being manipulated, it totally negates the purpose of why you're in business, which is to empower yourself, empower you mentally, physically, spiritually, financially. Benefit you, benefit your family, benefit your loved ones, benefit those within your circle, benefit your employees. That's what it's about. It's not about being manipulated. So do not allow someone else to manipulate you. Um, if you're doing contracts, please, please, I beg of you, please do not do the cut and paste nonsense. Because pennies to marbles, nine out of ten times... They're going to have to send, a facility is going to send it through their legal department, and it, it just screams. And this guy's not even a newbie. He should have known better. Again, I love him. And I told him if he ever does this again, I'm going to bring violence upon his face.
several times. I told him, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna I'm gonna bring violence upon you until I get tired. And after I eat, sleep, recoup, I'm gonna get up and repeat. I'm gonna do it again. So he knows better. He should have done it, and he he knows that. So if you're doing contract work, please don't be foolish. Don't listen to the White Walkers. Everyone says, oh, you don't need Joel. You don't need, ah, oh, you could do it on your own. Go do it on your own. Do your own market research. Dude, yeah, Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. Let me dive into some questions here. Joel, thank you for all your videos and great content. You don't know it, but you have helped shape and motivate me. And here it is. I think I'm the worst motivator. You don't know it, but you have helped shape and motivate me, helping me to face many fears about starting a business. It's a new year, and as a minimum, I need to start a business part-time. I have a flexible work schedule, which gives me options, but I need to keep my job because of the medical benefits for my family. I trust your judgment and direct style. So could you please offer insight into which business can be started part time. An EMT, home care, broker business, whatever you suggest, I'm ready to listen. Thank you very much, Justin. <sighs> Justin, great question. Um, a lot of time, a lot of people have asked us about um, starting a business part time. So, um, you don't mention what type of work you got or what your flexible schedule looks like. So I don't know if you like you got, uh, I don't know if you're working what five days a week, six days a week, three days a week. I don't know what that looks like. Uh, I don't know. Are you working during the days? You working during the evenings? Here's the thing I would tell you. If you're starting an NEMT business, um, there's people who start NEMT that work full time. But in order to do it and do it properly, they start out by paying someone else to actually get out there and drive and, and everything from the beginning. So a lot of people we work with who are starting out, they start out by themselves. They're starting out as a driver. Maybe they're starting with a spouse, a husband, a wife, or something like that. Um, that's awesome. But other people who, like you, uh, still want to keep working, whether they're working their job part-time, full-time, whatever, get benefits, whatever the reasons are. If they're unable to go out there and serve as that driver number one, then you got to hire someone to do it. So is it doable? Yes. I mean, we work with people who do that all the time, but you have to understand that's going to cost you more money because you're paying for labor from the outset, from Jump Street. So... And that's regarding a legitimate NEMT business. Again, let me let me let me um, underscore. I've mentioned in previous videos. If you're out there driving Uber, driving for Lyft, and you call yourself a medical transportation provider, dude, you're not. You're an Uber driver. You're a taxi cab driver. You're a Lyft driver. Whatever. You're a rideshare operator. Whatever you want to call it. If all you do is, oh, I'm driving my sedan, I'm driving my, mini, my minivan, all you're doing is doing, if all you're doing is ambulatory people, if all you're doing is transporting ambulatory people, I know you love to call yourself an NEMT provider. It feels good if you want. I don't care. Call it sexy. But you're not. You're not. And you're never going to put yourself in a position where you're going to have a legitimate business to sell for a multiple. It's just not going to be there. A legitimate non-emergency medical transportation provider, as a minimum, is doing wheelchair. In some states where you can't do stretcher, like even the great state of Texas, they don't let traditional NEMT providers do stretchers. you got to be, as a minimum, BLS. Same thing with, like, even North Carolina. Um, but regardless, to be a legitimate NEMT provider, in my opinion based upon my experience and what I see and work with all these different people. If you want to make real money, as a minimum, you got to be able to transport wheelchairs. That's it. Okay. So with all that being said, can you start an NEMT business part-time? No. No. One of the, we call it the holy grail. The holy grail of the industry are dialysis patients. Why? Because they go three times a week. They're typically scheduled Monday, Wednesday, Friday, or Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday. So someone who's on dialysis, they got to go. You, you can't be missing it. So if you're going to be an EMT provider, realistically, 
you want to be operational six days a week in some capacity on Saturday. So Monday through Friday is when you'd be busiest. Saturday you should be operational because again, if you have dialysis uh, patients who are traveling Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, they got to get to appointment. So there's no such thing as, hey, I'm taking a four day weekend and you're just starting out the business. Now, if you've grown the business, you've got the infrastructure. I mean, I used to take every September, I used to take off to go to Italy. Well, I had the infrastructure, I could pull that off. When I was just starting my business out there hustling, burning both ends of the candle, was that feasible? Absolutely not, it wasn't feasible. So there is no part time, you've got to have coverage. You can't go out there. Everything I try to teach people with NEMT is to go out there, build your private pay, your clientele, your contracted, your service agreement work. That gives you real sustainability, real profitability to sell at a future multiple. So you got to be able to have coverage because you can't go in there and tell somebody, we want your business, we, you solicit them, you court them, and oh, we're not going to be in the office next uh, you know, Monday through Wednesday. It's not feasible. Not feasible. Um, home care, here's the beautiful thing about home care. Home care does not cost as much to start as an NEMT because home care, I mean, look, the real cost is labor with home care. I mean, that, that is the real cost is your labor, bottom line. As you build, grow, and scale, some of your office, your office staff will, it, it will increase. But with technology, you do not need to, inc you don't need to carry as much office staff as you used to back in the day. But um, the good thing about home care versus an NEMT is that uh, startup cost is dramatically cheaper and you could, you could control it much more. For example, you know, the upfront cost for NEMT you're gonna have to get that vehicle you're gonna have to to get insurance home care you don't have that and home care realistically you're only gonna pay uh, 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 a home care provider you're only gonna pay your caregivers when they're working bottom line um, with NEMT you get the vehicle even if the vehicle even after hours that vehicle sitting there will that still cost you money um, can you start home care part-time I think you have more freedom and flexibility. Uh, we have people who start it on a much more gradual basis than you do like NEMT. Again, NEMT, you want to put yourself out there um, where you are engaging and soliciting facilities for, for the, their private pay clientele, their contractor, the service agreement work. That is where the real profitability and sustainability is. I know there's many of you who uh, love the White Walkers, you still watch a lot of my content, never gonna do anything because you're a freebie expert, whatever. So you're entertained by the fat man, but you're never gonna do anything. You know who you are, and, this, and I, I'm, whatever, I don't hate on you, it is what it is, I don't care. Um, you would rather have an NEMT business model where you just sit back, let the brokers dictate. If they give me trips today, that's cool, I'll perform them. If they don't, I don't perform them. Hey man, I call that risky business, but so be it. If that's how you want to live your life, I don't know if you call that empowering yourself, letting somebody else serve as the gatekeeper, the toll booth operator, just sitting back and waiting for them to bless you with trips. If they have them, if they want to give them to you, maybe they found someone cheaper to do it, so they'll give it to them tomorrow. You never know. Every day it's tough to plan because you never know. You never know what's going to come in. Hey man, if that's how you want to live your business, live your life and build your business, that's on you. I can't, that's not my thing. I don't want to spouse it. Never going to. Um, in, terms, in terms of starting a business part-time, the only one I would say you would legitimately do it and still be able to empower yourself while working part-time. And again, Justin, I'm not sure what your part-time looks like. Is your part-time a couple hours a day? Is it just the weekends? I don't know. You don't mention that uh, really much about your schedule itself. The one business where you could definitely start and make money and have control and empower yourself is your own broker business. Now, for those of you who don't know, I think I mentioned it in several videos before, but look, my bread and butter at the end of the day is my broker business. It is what it is. So that's why when people... When people complain about me not, um, and I get, I got some things here. When people complain because I'm not uh, doing consultations and all that, I don't have to. 
God has blessed us. God is good. I don't have to. This is why I'm the absolute worst online marketer. I don't, I don't have to. That's why, that's why you don't see all those, all those promotions. You know, 72 hours, act now. Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. You don't see that nonsense with us because we don't have to. Such crap. I hate that stuff. But my, the bulk of my business, where my time and effort goes, is in my broker business. It is what it is. And the reason I do what I do with the NMT and home care is because I'm good at it. I'm good at it. And it's like you take this client provider who I read his comments before. Good morning, Joel. You definitely nailed it. You always nailed it. Dang, this contract looks top class. I appreciate it so much. You saved me. Again, my ability, my God-given ability that God is blessing me with puts me in a position to help people like that. So it's part of my own personal mission. And it's awesome. But when it comes for my own personal Joel Davis business model, the bulk of everything I do now is my broker business. My broker business, at the end of the day, I'm, I'm absolutely lackluster in making videos about it and content because honestly, we've just been so busy. It is what it is. But when it comes to my broker business, uh, for those of you who may be new to our channel, my broker business is not like a Medicaid broker. It has nothing to do with Medicaid. My broker business, I started at the very end of 2011. I was considering very close to starting my own home care agency. I went to help a client provider who uh, I'd worked with years before in the NMT space, helped him grow his business, was doing well. Long story short, he needs help because he started this niche moving business, helping people. They were transitioning from uh, living privately to being transitioned to assisted in, in independent living facilities. And he started the moving business and all that kind of stuff. I got, um, I went to help him because his business is taken off. I saw the opportunity. I'm like, dude, I could do this, do it well, parlay it like this, parlay it like that, yada, yada, yada. Next thing you know, I'm still in this business for over a decade. Business has taken so many different awesome twists and turns and grown in ways I could not have imagined. Um, so to be clear, for those of you who are new to this channel, my broker business has nothing to do with Medicaid brokers, so please stop emailing us, asking us if we could help them start their own Medicaid broker system to get out from underneath logistic care and MTM. That is not what the broker business is about. My broker business, we do a lot of what we call express moves, which are move jobs that are completely overlooked and underserved traditional movers are never going to touch them because the job is too small for a traditional mover to send a 26 28 foot uh, big rig or box truck down there with the crew of four to six they're never going to touch these small jobs uh, we do a lot of delivery and i'm not talking this amazon nonsense this last mile this chase two dollars here chase three dollars there no, no we're moving bigger ticket items um and it and our business has just grown all over the place. I mean, I, again, this past year, I guarantee right now if I log into our paychecks account, our 1099s are done. I'll check them, and when I get when they get done, I will um, just like I've done every year. I'll share around around this time. I share some of our our 1099s so you can see how much money our contractors are making. Right now, we got about 60. So if our contractors are making money, you know we're making money. Long story short. I know I'm long-winded already. Um, anybody, 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 anybody who ever complains, oh, I can't make money, I can't find a job, I can't make money. Bro, you just don't want to work. I'm sorry. You just don't want to work. Oh, Joel, how can you say that? You understand. I can say that because there is so much work out there. We got a small army of contractors, and we still have a hard time. If I had more contractors, we, we could do even more. I'm just telling you because there's so much work out there, bottom line. And our business in, what was it, uh... We're in 2022, so 20, 
Well, when was this game demic? It was 20... 20 was it? Okay. So 2020, we were down at one point in time. We were down 42% at one point in time. Remember, we had to flatten the curve. Flatten the curve. So we shut things down. Everyone joins in like barking seals. Okay, well, we can suck it up for two weeks. We flatten the curve. How's that working out for us two years later? So we flatten the curve. Everything shuts down. Our business dips 42, 43%. And by, by year's end, this thing's opened up. We not only rebounded, re rebounded well, we actually finished the year. We squeaked out a, a W. We squeaked out a win and had our best year until last year. So 2021, we did some of the craziest stuff. We jokingly call it hot shot trucking, but it's not. Hot shot trucking is typically when people are using flatbed trailers and they're doing some basically similar to some of the long haul but they're not taking they're taking smaller loads they're basically taking smaller loads running all over the place similar to like um like you'd see big rigs doing we don't particularly do that per se but you know internally in our in my organization we call it we, we call it our, our hot shot trucking which is our um abbreviated or ghetto version of hot shot hot shot trucking because a lot of my guys got box trucks some own them some rent them, some own enclosed trailers. Uh, we've been to this past year with the supply chain issues, our guys have been absolutely swamped. In addition to doing, I mean, in addition to doing some of the most um, unorthodox move jobs to help people, case in point, we sent a crew up to New Jersey. The communist state of New Jersey, we sent people from Carolina to New Jersey to move a family down. We sent them up there not once, but twice. But twice. Could they have found someone cheaper to do it? I, I'm sure they probably could have. But they paid us for deadhead miles up, loaded miles down. Not once, but twice. Why did they use us not once, but twice? Because they are a repeat customer. Their family, we've done work for it in Carolina several times before. They refer them to us. That is the beautiful thing about our broker business is that, I mean, we there's really, we do such limited marketing. The reason we don't market more is because we can't, because even now, we got a small army of contractors and even we're shorthanded enough that we can't, we can't even take on other certain projects in certain places. I mean, it's crazy. I could... I gotta find time to make some new videos for youarethebroker.com. I'm way behind on that, and I know that I am, but we are just oomph. My point to you is this. I know I'm all over the place. I'm all over the place because, again, when I hear people say, oh, I just can't find work. Oh, I wish I could. Oh, man, well, I wish I could do that too. Dude, there is so much opportunity to make money. I'm sorry. I, I don't even care. It's just it's laughable now. Um, even in this crazy, ridiculous, laughable, insane loon tune time that we're living in right now with the sleepy, creepy dementia patient, the cackling sidekick Medusa, it's insane. You can still make money if you are a flipping hustler, bottom line. And a lot of people, you, who, who, they'll go online. Here's the difference. Here's the difference. You are the broker.com and some, some of this other nonsense you see online. When you go online, what are they all teaching you to do? To go become your own independent operator. That is not, let me underscore, that is not what you are the broker.com is designed to do. If, if, if what everyone else is doing online, teaching you to be your own independent operator, if I was trying to teach you to do the same thing, then I would have something that, that's called, uh, you know, how, you are the uh, independent operator.com or something like that. That is not what it's designed to do. What you are the broker.com is designed to do is to teach you to do exactly what I continue to do, which is build your own network. Your network is your net worth. Now, the reason I say you can start your broker business part-time is because you can you have complete control over when you perform your work. Bottom line, with NEMT, you don't. When someone has an appointment, you gotta go and it's on their schedule. Home care, it's their schedule. It's when your clients need it. With youarethebroker.com, it's really, I mean, yeah, it's, you know, it could, it's at the request of the customer, but hey, 
They may want it Wednesday at 8 a.m., but it's not going to be there Wednesday at 8 a.m. You may not be able to do it until Wednesday until 4 p.m. or something like that, something along those lines. In many of our more rural areas where we know we do not have the capacity because we don't have the contractors, or sometimes our work orders are very staggered in some of these rural areas, we won't try to chase after every single one when they come available. What we'll do, we'll literally do it every other day. We'll schedule and we'll tell them, that, hey, if we don't even have availability until Wednesday. We don't have availability until Friday. So it gives us a couple days and we'll stack up the work orders. Now we have a contractor. In some places we have contractors that literally will, will wait till there's enough work orders, go rent the truck, go perform the work. Boom. And they'll deliver the items, the bigger ticket, everything from appliances, furniture, mattresses, whatever. Clearly, that has nothing to do with Medicaid brokers. That's a question we receive every single day. Uh, you know, can you can you help me? Can you can you teach me? They'll re, re, uh, reach out to us through youarethebroker.com. Can you teach me to build my own Medicaid broker? No, no. Why would we do that? Why do we want to get involved in something with all that nonsense regulation and? Just garbage when you can make so much money going into niches that have no regulation whatsoever. No regulation whatsoever. And as long as you hustle and you're willing to work, you make money. It's the most beautiful thing. So, Justin, I know I just spent about 75 minutes all over the place. You could see, you know, I can get long winded when I get excited over some good stuff. NEMT, not going to be able to start that part-time. You, if you start it and you promise someone, you offer a facility coverage, you got to have coverage, bottom line, whether it's you driving or somebody else. Home care, when the client needs it, you got to be willing to serve. The broker business, that's your bat. I'm just telling you right now, that is your bat. So if you're looking for a legitimate business that you want to start part-time, and again, I don't know what your part-time per se looks like. Is it just three days a week? Is it like Sunday, Monday... Uh, is it uh, you know Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday? I don't know. Or is it just the evenings? You want to do something in the evenings? You can still pull that off. You can still pull that off. I respect that you still want to keep your current job right now for your medical benefits. But I guarantee, I just had this conversation the other day with somebody. Um, you, that you're gonna put yourself in a position. You're going to you're gonna build momentum, build momentum, you're on the right trajectory, and then you're just going to be teetering. You're going to be teetering. Do I stay or go? Do I stay or go? You have got to be, when the timing is right, you'll know it, but you've got to be able to cut the cord, cut the tether, leave the dock, and head out to open seas and build your own business. And obviously, again, I'm a numbers guy, I love numbers. You want to do it at a point in time when... Again, you need the medical benefits. You got to be able to cover your own medical benefits. You got to take care of your family. I'm a biblical, a biblical capitalist. God comes first, then your spouse, then your kids. Got to take care of your family, no doubt. So I get it. You got to be able to provide medical benefits for them. But man, it, I'm so tired of hearing people's nonsense. Oh, I can't make money. Oh, it's such a struggle. The hard part right now is actually, and I don't, and this is true in any business you got. Labor is still an issue. I think it is improving slowly but surely. Labor is improving. The labor conditions are. Um, I'd say there is a strong parallel. My broker business is all 1099 contractors. All of them. Everybody. Everyone's 1099. Um, I'd say that there are similar problems. You know, it's always a challenge to find a good contractor, especially a contractor who has their own box truck or enclosed trailer. Or is at least willing to go out there and uh, rent one when necessary. I mean, they're there. They're there. And it, but it's tough. You got to go through them. But, um, so starting your business part-time, if you start your business, reach first of all, reach out to Amelia. Send email, uh, Amelia an email. Amelia, E-M-I-L-I-A. R. Daniels, Amelia R. Daniels at Yahoo.com. Amelia is my personal assistant. Works directly with me in my broker business. She's, I mean, she's learned so much over these last few years since she's been with me. Um, she's learned a wealth of knowledge, not only about the broker business. By default, she's learned a lot about the NEMT and home care. I mean, she's 
you know, because obviously she helps me with a lot of different stuff. But she works primarily in my broker business and with youarethebroker.com, so she'll be able to answer your questions, get you pointed in the right direction. So definitely reach out to her. It will be a very good investment for you. Um, I apologize for being long-winded, but I'm sure you know by now. <laughs> I really don't. So, got to keep my throat dry, otherwise, as much as I talk and ramble, I lose it, lose my voice. Do you guys uh, certify, uh, do you guys certified NEMT accreditation? I um, said that, said that, that sounds a little weird. Do you guys certified NEMT accreditation? I'm not sure, that's a little off, but anyways, uh, listen, I've talked about this before in previous videos. There is absolutely zero, zip, nada. There is no organization in this country that does any type of accreditation. There is anyone telling you, we, we get your NEMT providers accredited. We give you accreditation. We get them certified. That is such a farce. It's so laughable. Let's say you get certified in California. Do you think anybody in Arizona cares? Not in the least. Do you think anybody in Colorado cares? New York cares? Not in the least. You have got to understand the NEMT industry is fragmented, not just from state to state, but literally in many states where they've deregulated, it's county by county. Case in point, one of the classic, one of the best states out there for many different reasons besides the fact that they have the country's single best governor, uh, Ron DeSantis, the great sunshiny, sunshiny state of Florida. Florida is an awesome state for so many reasons. If you can't make money in Florida, you should never be an entrepreneur. Just go work for somebody else. Florida is a phenomenal state. Florida, with regards to NEMT, is deregulated. It is state by state. So every county operates their own D some some counties have no regulation whatsoever in regards to NEMT then other counties their their county NEMT will regulate their uh their their NEMT rules regulations all that kind of stuff so you once you cross the county board they don't care so anybody please I've talked about this so many times with so many people and again I know there's it's frustrating because I repeat myself and I know that annoys a lot of you guys but we get new people who come into the channel and all that kind of stuff so Take care for what it's worth. Anybody trying to sell you on national accreditation or get them certified, there is nothing that exists. When you go to a hospital and you're trying to um, solicit them, become a, a preferred provider for them, put yourself in a position to do business with them, make money for them, sell your business in the future, do you think anybody asks if you are accredited by blah, blah, blah organization? Do you think they care? All they need, all they want is to get their problems solved. They don't care about these feel-good, fluffy nonsense. And as always, I'm going to say it again and again. All these people that keep promising you the accreditation, please go visit their websites. Go visit their websites and look for yourself and see who they partner with. See who they're sponsored by. I don't care how, how much flash, pizzazz, what they sell on their, their websites, it's all a money-making nonsense scheme. They are bought, paid for, owned by the, the brokers. It is the, the, the real, this is the real Russian collusion right here. Go look at their websites. See, see if they're sponsored, if they're partnered with the Medicaid and the Medicaid brokers. And then tell me they're all about empowering you. Spend serious time on their websites. See who they're partnering with, and then tell me they're all about powering you. And then when they say they want to get you accredited, you 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 certified, da, 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 it's to put you into their system, i.e. the broker system. They're bought, they're paid for, they're owned by the brokers, bottom line. I'm looking to set up a possible coaching session with Joel to discuss the NMT business. Good luck, it's not going to happen. I do not do... Uh, individual coaching sessions to satisfy whatever your questions are. I am too flipping busy. I don't have time for nonsense. If you haven't studied some of the material, here's the deal. People will, my people are busy every day. And most of the time it's because they're 
answering questions by people who uh, um, we're engaged with, we're working with, doing one-on-one -on -one with. Um, they're working on custom market analysis because, God, they take a lot of time and that take a lot of phone calls. Building <laughs> those custom market analysis, those can be tough because you can call certain facilities. You can literally call certain facilities and people won't even know who the administrator is. If you ask for, can I ask you, who is the uh, administrator of ABC facility? Oh, I don't even know. It's crazy. It's crazy. So anyways, that requires multiple phone calls. That's why a lot of times if you call and we don't answer, it's because my people are probably on the phone calling someone trying to build, build a market analysis. But I want to be clear. It's not that we think we're better than anybody. It's not that we don't necessarily want to, but we do not have time for elementary questions. If we answered every elementary question, if we, especially if, if I got on the phone with this person, I am looking to set up a possible coaching session with Joel to discuss the AMT business. What does that mean? Have you even read my ebook? Have you studied any of the material? And I'm not even trying to hard sell anything here, so please keep things in prior perspective. I know, you, I know a lot of people are gonna bash me online and all the white walkers, whatever, but you gotta keep things in perspective. If you haven't even studied any of the material, what makes you think I'm going to get on the phone and talk to you and rehash and answer the most stupid, basic, elementary questions? If you've studied this material, studied our resources, you are the level of depth of our conversation is going to be like night and day. It's just fact. It's just fact. Number one. Number two, I am just too flipping busy than to, to I am, I'm looking to set up a possible coaching session with Joel to discuss the NMT business. Really? Well, what's your number? Let me call you right now. It's just not going to happen. That is just so. Next. Hi, Daniel. I hope uh, I hope all is well with you and the team at MDT. I'm considering investing in the one-on-one -on -one coaching opportunity and have a few questions about it. I'm wondering if you or whomever you feel is most appropriate might be able uh, might be available at some point in early January for a call where I can better understand the scope of the coaching services, timing, et cetera, almost like a consultation. No, no. There are many areas where I've identified where I could need specific industry health expertise advice, so I'm hoping a phone call could help clear that up. Uh, let me know if there's any availability in early mid-January, and I would look forward to it. Thanks, Andrew. Listen, um, again, it's the same type of situation. It's... Um, you got to understand back long, 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 long time ago, many, many moons ago, literally I would, uh, you know, I, well, I would have called someone like this, but that what you would hope would be a five or 10 minute conversation, especially because you actually care about the person on their end. You want to give them legitimate time and effort and value and show them some love that five, 10 minute conversation. Next thing you know, it's 15, 20, 30 minutes. You do that several times in a day, you've absolutely annihilated precious, precious time. And it's repetitive. It's repetitive. This is what white walkers do. This is why I say it's so soul-sucking. The white walkers of the industry, uh, man, they just zap, they zap you of strength and energy because they take your time. Time is money and money is time. So especially, again, I'm speaking for me personally, of uh, the vast majority of my effort has to be towards my broker business because guess what? That's where your that's where the real money is. What do you want me to tell you? Okay, and then I have to focus my time and effort on my one-on-one -on -one clients, my coaching clients who are paying me good money. Again, if I go back out to my buddy up here, you definitely nailed it. You always dealt, nailed it. Dang, that contract looks top class. I appreciate it so much. You saved me again. Laugh out loud. I'll read I'll read this line by line, do exactly what you mentioned. Who, who, when I have time, who am I going to invest my time with? It's got to be someone like this. Someone who's committed to what they're doing. It's just reality. So when you start, now I know that this offends people. So this, this what my message right now, but then who is it? Justin said, um, I trust your judgment and direct style. So could you please offer insight, blah, blah, blah. Well, this is my direct style. When you start your business, whether it's NMT, broker, home care, are you gonna give away some of your business, especially in the early stages? Absolutely. 
that's it's it's you want to get business you got to give it away early on let people see it feel it touch it bring added value absolutely but there's going to come a point in time where time is the critical factor you it's precious and you can't afford to waste it so you you've got to have discernment have judgment you've got to focus on your legitimate clientele uh you don't have time by the fly by nights people hey does that mean you don't tithe you don't give you don't donate of course you do there's a time and a place for that but you just can't do it repeatedly or you're gonna give everything away and you're gonna have nothing and when you have nothing you help no one so it is not an option so andrew i don't know anything about uh i didn't see a response of who responded to you or what they said but i mean i'm not gonna uh you know um, what am I going to do? Schedule something for January 15th or whatever? I mean, who, I, that's not how we, we'd work. So I know that isn't the ideal answer or scenario for many people, and they're offended by that, but it is what it is. Those of you who are looking to work with us one on one for 60 days for NEMT, that's awesome. Definitely reach out to us, go through the website, get, your, uh, get signed up. Those of you who are looking to do 120 days with our home care access, I mean, 120 days, that's four months. Our executive team is working with you. That's a lot of effort and a lot of work. I mean, again, it's you can only work with so many people at a certain time. I mean, this guy who I built this uh, uh, contract for, I mean, that's several hours worth of work. Am I really going to interrupt that to contact someone? Uh, I'm looking to set up a possible coaching session. I don't do a coaching. But there is no one size fits all. So if you are doing one-on-one -on -one with, with me for NEMT, if you're doing 120 days for home care access, if you're working with one of my regional directors for youarethebroker.com, there is no one size fits all. It's all about... Taking your, your current position, your current economic situation, your level of experience, your desires, uh, your motivation, the specific particulars associated with your local community. It's about taking all those things into consideration in its totality and putting the best strategies, game plan together to see you succeed. Bottom line. There is no one size fits all. So for those of you looking for one-on-one -on -one for NEMT or one-on-one -on -one for home care or for one-on-one -on -one with youarethebroker.com to set up your broker business, there is no one size fits all. It's all about using all those specifics I just mentioned, strategizing, putting the guess, best game plan together to put you in the position to be successful. It's not step one, step two, step three, and everybody get in line, it's the same. That Go to the freebie nonsense for that stuff. The, go to the, the, what is it, business in a box or some crap like that. That is not what we do. Listen, I got to run here. So um, I apologize for getting so long-winded. I did not intend to, and I actually planned on getting for, through at least three more Three more questions here, but I'm not going to have time only because i got to run. So I apologize, but I really don't. But I do hope that some of you found some good golden nuggets in, in my lengthy diatribe and my rambling. So stay tuned. Uh, I definitely, I definitely, you know, after talking today, I got to find time to make some more recent up-to-date videos for youarethebroker.com because, again, so many people, I can't make money, I don't know what to do. You are absolutely insane. There is so much money to be made out there if you're willing to hustle. Number one. Uh, number two, so I got to make, I got to commit to making videos for youarethebroker.com to update all that kind of good stuff. Definitely, I have some that are uh, key for um, uh, home care access. Some of you are, you, you finished up your 120 days you are poised to do great things. Kudos to many of you who are now approved and licensed in your state. Poised to do exceptionally well. Kudos to you. So stay tuned. I will definitely keep everybody informed about uh, upcoming videos. I gotta try. I'm gonna try to put some together over the next one or two days. Or so. I gotta. I gotta do it by tomorrow. I gotta start putting some together to get caught up on things. So stay tuned. Keep checking your email. Whether it's during the week. Over the weekend, early in the morning, late at night, just stay tuned when you do. I'll see you at the top. Let's go, Brandon. Hey. Let's go.